Retired NFL star turned successful TV host Michael Strawn lives in New York City these days to be close to the Good Morning America studio. Fans have been able to catch a glimpse at his Upper West Side home thanks to Instagram, whether he's showing off his modern kitchen or lounging in the living room with his kids in what appears to be a townhouse. Aside from this, Michael has lived in a few luxury properties over the years, including another Manhattan loft and a massive mansion in Los Angeles, which spans over 15,000 square feet of space. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. After retiring from the NFL, Michael Strawn has found quite the success as a TV personality. The former athlete not only was a football analyst on Fox, but he continued on to host live with Kelly and Michael from 2012 to 2016 and currently hosts on Good Morning America. With his entertainment career, Michael has to live close to work and reportedly loves his home in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Not only does he like the warmth and family-friendly atmosphere of the luxury townhome, he's also hinted in the past that he has a backyard, which is rare for New York City. However, with an impressive net worth of about $65 million, you already know that Michael's properties will be only the best. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here in Famous Entertainment, this time checking out the homes of Michael Strawn. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Before we check out Michael's New York homes, let's take a look at one of his former properties on the West Coast. Located in the upscale neighborhood of Brentwood in Los Angeles, reports claim that Michael sold this mansion for a whopping $21.5 million in 2015, much more than the $16 million he paid for it a couple of years prior. The beautiful home sat on an acre of land and it was a neo-colonial style mansion protected by double gates and high hedges, backing onto a thick forest of trees and a creek. Details show that Michael's former residence offered 15,600 square feet of space with 9 beds and 14 baths throughout all of which was recently renovated. The large mansion also had three floors which could be accessed via elevator and luxury details from a wine cellar with drinking lounge to a 59 foot pool and much more. The entry hall was cavernous with soaring ceilings and it was attached to the also large formal living room, both boasting 20 foot wood ceilings, black chandeliers and dark oak floors. Michael seems like a man of class and the cigar friendly library along with the prohibition style wine cellar with drinking lounge in the home sound like quite the classy rooms to match. The library was also wood paneled and offered a flat screen TV on top of a fireplace while other main floor spaces included a formal dining room and den with entertainment center. We can't forget the main attraction here either, which was an open plan great room made up of a family room with fireplace, casual eating area, and all white kitchen with top notch appliances. Two of the guest bedrooms with en suites were located on the ground floor of Michael's mansion, while the rest were located upstairs. Also upstairs was the impressive master retreat located in its own wing with sitting room, fireplace fitted bedroom, terrace, as well as double walk in closets and en suites. The basement of the mansion was fully finished with two more bedrooms, a lounge area, and other bonuses like a games room. And if that's not enough, there's a 20 seat home movie theater with 15 foot screen, a gym, sauna, and a steam room, and the wine cellar which I previously mentioned. Since this mansion is celeb approved, it's not surprising there's also a cedar line storage room with separate walk-in safe for valuables down here as well. Outside, a heated wraparound porch accommodates the mansion's exterior and leads to the backyard. Here, there are stone terraces, a 59-foot-long pool and spa, and an open pavilion with pool bath, outdoor fireplace, wet bar, and outdoor kitchen and grill. Okay, with all of those luxury features Michael's former mansion was packing in, you have to bet it was hard to downsize to Manhattan-sized living from that. Michael's current New York City apartment wasn't his first rodeo there either. Just before owning that mega Brentwood mansion we just looked at, the former athlete 
was selling his loft in the Tribeca neighborhood in 2014. While he sold this New York apartment for $2.3 million, he originally purchased the two-bedroom, two-bathroom place in 2008 for $1.66 million. Michael had plans to refresh and upgrade the nearly 2,000 square foot abode, but he never got around to it in the end. Looking at the polished hardwood floors and an all-white bathroom, the place didn't look like it needed a renovation anyways. There were whitewashed brick walls to bring out the pre-war vibes of the loft while still looking modern and the entire unit was super open plan with soaring ceilings overhead. There were a few living areas or lounges along with a spacious kitchen with bar style seats and cherry wood cabinets. Michael's one time loft was trendy and cozy at the same time but he didn't call the place home for too long before trying to sell it. As for where Michael lives now, we know he mainly calls the upper west side area of Manhattan home, a neighborhood which he loves. He said, I like the Upper West Side because being a father, I like the family feel to it. You see mothers with strollers, people walking their dogs. One thing I love about the neighborhood, when you go into places, it's not like, Michael, I'm another person who's just there. So I guess he just likes feeling normal. While this neighborhood is often thought to be small apartments with zero outdoor space, Michael is lucky to have plenty of space in his townhouse and even a charming backyard. The father of four shares the crib with his dog Enzo and his kids split their time between both of their parents' homes. Michael has given fans a peek at his home in the heart of New York City thanks to Instagram, especially his kitchen and main living areas. His living room is spacious with floor to ceiling windows overlooking the garden and a mostly gray toned color scheme. The open plan space boasts a large couch, a flat screen TV, and artwork on the walls. There are other plush furnishings here too, including a velvet armchair and more. This living room is separated from the kitchen by the white island and there are also French doors leading out to a terrace. Since Michael loves to cook, we often get to see the modern and airy kitchen in the background. This space has off-white cupboards, white marble worktops, and a modern glass light fixture. It even comes equipped with a large range and other designer appliances. This is where Michael loves to spend time when he's not working, and it seems his twin daughter Sophia and Isabella love to cook alongside him too. In one Instagram video, Michael actually showed his daughter giving a tutorial on how to make barbecue chicken. While the family likes to put their grill outside to use as well. In the summer, they shared photos grilling meats and vegetables outside in their yard. Yes, unlike most New Yorkers, Michael is lucky enough to have his own mini backyard or outdoors, a small terraced area surrounded by a fence for privacy and some hedges. In the past, he said, I have a little backyard, open the doors, sit out there and have breakfast or just let the sunlight and the warmth come in. Michael also often shares photos of himself lounging at his cozy and welcoming home with his cute dog Enzo. He has even shown off Enzo chilling out at the home gym, which looks spacious enough and set up with enough equipment and machine for Michael to stay in great shape. Despite all the nice features at Michael's New York City home, you might wonder where he stores the rest of his things. It turns out that he has a separate space across the Hudson River for some of his vehicles and other toys, stating, I have a warehouse in Hackensack, New Jersey where I keep my cars and it's the only place where I store memorabilia. I don't like having that stuff in the house feels like I'm living in the past when you've got to keep moving forward. Well, whatever works for him. Music mogul Simon Cowell likes to live in luxury and in his case, one home is not enough. He travels across the globe for his Hollywood career, therefore owning multi-million properties in both California and his native England. Simon's main residence is located in Holland Park in London, England, and he keeps it very private, while he also owns a West Coast abode in Malibu. Today we're going to take a look at these properties and more. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Simon Cowell is an English TV personality, entrepreneur, and record executive who's well known for being a judge on series like The X Factor, American Idol, America's Got Talent, and more. He's also the founder and owner of the British entertainment company Psycho. The famed music mogul has amassed a net worth of about $600 million, which he's invested a large part of into his properties around the world. Aside from his Holland Park main mansion where Simon resides with his fiancée.
estate Lauren Silverman and their son Eric, he's owned a multitude of homes over the years. Most recently, at the end of 2021, it was reported that Simon was selling a home he bought in Wimbledon for about $23 million, one which he never even ended up living in. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, and in this one, we're checking out the homes of Simon Cowell. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Simon's main home is something impressive as you might expect. It's a multi-million dollar mansion in the Holland Park area of London. It's an area of Kensington on the western edge of central London and is very sought after and exclusive. Holland Park is also home to the Beckhams, who have a massive 31 million pound mansion just a few streets away. Simon's abode is where he resides with his partner Lauren and their seven year old son Eric. And with five bedrooms, there's plenty of room for them all. The exterior of Simon's estate boasts a large classic black front door and plenty of security cameras around. We also know he keeps this place tightly under wraps, especially since it's been the target of burglars in the past. This London home is thought to be worth seven to ten million dollars. The five bedroom, five bathroom house is also said to have four reception rooms. On a tour of the home, the Huffington Post showed the home filled with white roses and scented candles. The living rooms are said to have at least six enormous couches, while Simon's dining room seats ten, and houses a Steinway grand piano. At the end of 2021, Simon put his second home in England on the market for 18 million pounds, which translates to about $23 million US, without ever living in the place. After paying 15 million pounds for the seven bedroom property located in Wimbledon, London back in 2019, Simon spent a further 1 million pounds on renovations. He wanted to create the ideal family home. However, before moving in, the couple attempted their trial school runs of the 14 mile round trip from the house to Eric's school. It's said that on at least one occasion, it took more than two hours, so it wasn't ideal. The closure of Hammersmith Bridge in the area made the problem worse, and with no plans for it to be reopened, the couple then decided that they're going to remain in their other mansion in Holland Park. A source said, Simon and Lauren fancied a change. They wanted to get out of central London and go somewhere a little more leafy. They wanted clean air and to make it their long-term family home. They spent a lot of time and money on it, but things just didn't work out, so they have decided to put it on the market and stay put. Simon's former Wimbledon house is close to the official London residence of Pope Francis and 21,000 pound a year King's College School. The renovations that Simon carried out on the property included removing ceilings, floors and fireplaces, and even stripping down some of the walls to brickwork. Simon further had plans for the historic home, including the addition of expensive upgrades like a 15 meter outdoor pool with its own pool house and bar. Now over on the west coast, Simon currently owns a $24 million mansion in Malibu, which may be the most famous of his properties. It's even made appearances on his TV shows over the years, like the X Factor celebrity auditions that were taped at his home. Simon purchased the temporary single level estate in 2017, and it's situated on a private bluff at the end of a gated tree-lined driveway. There's over 1.5 acres of gorgeous gardens surrounding the home and sweeping ocean views from the entryway down the grand hallway. I mean, what else would you expect from Malibu? The mansion is just meters from the coast and inside spans 10,000 square feet of space with seven beds and nine baths. Simon's Malibu house was built in 1988 and of course updated since, offering stone and dark wood floors, Venetian plaster walls and high ceilings with large skylights. In total, the home has six fireplaces, some inside and some outside, so that you can choose to cozy up beside. Rooms in this home include everything from formal dining spaces decked out in marble to a home gym. While all of the bedrooms are luxurious, the one which Simon and his partner Lauren share is decidedly the best. The his and hers master suite boasts a massage room, a spa, a fireplace, and even a private patio. One of the other guest suites in the home has its own entrance, and there are additional staff quarters too. Simon's home is ideal for indoor-outdoor Malibu living, with a ton of space for entertaining. Pocket doors through Throughout the home open up to the tropical backyard, where there's a plunge pool, a hot tub, a barbecue, and multiple terraces. There's also a koi pond directly off of the home, which has floor-to-ceiling glass windows, and aerial shots show a lighted tennis court on the property, 
which the media mogul seems to use as a car park. Simon actually spent months recovering from a broken back at his Malibu home back in 2020, after an electric bike incident. While the star doesn't usually share pics inside his private home, he did share a photo of himself with his son in the garden with their pet dogs. Reportedly, Simon was planning to spend more time at the property in order to enjoy a quieter life away from Hollywood with his family. Wendy Williams has recently snagged herself a brand new $4.5 million apartment in the heart of New York City. The purchase came just weeks before she announced she was taking a break from the Wendy Williams show, and the luxury building boasts amenities like chalet fireplaces, a full pet spa, and much more. Wendy was searching for a new home after selling her New Jersey mansion last year, and has since been renting a stunning bachelorette pad in Manhattan for a whopping 15 k per month. Today, we're gonna check out all of Wendy's homes. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Wendy Williams is a media personality, broadcaster, businesswoman, and more, who's best known as the host of the talk show, The Wendy Williams Show, which has been on air since 2008. At the time of this recording, Wendy has amassed a net worth of over $40 million, allowing her to live a luxury Manhattan lifestyle. After nearly a year on the market, the TV star sold her marital home in New Jersey for $1.4 million, which isn't a lot for the mansion-sized abode. Wendy has often referenced her fancy bachelorette pad in the city, but never given us a full look. But today, that's about to change. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment. This time, looking at where Wendy Williams calls home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. And now, let's get into this video. In summer 2020, Wendy finally got rid of her suburban family home for $1.4 million after a year on the market. She was hoping to sell it for $1.9 million, even after purchasing it for much more back in 2009 for $2.1 million when she was with her ex-husband, Kevin Hunter. Either way, the motivated sellers agreed to split the profits from the home sale. Wendy moved out of the mansion last year and has been living in her 15 k per month rental in the city since then, which boasts views of the Hudson River. Anyway, her former estate was located in the suburban hood of Livingston, New Jersey, about 20 miles from the busy city center, and it sat on nearly an acre of land behind secure gates at the end of a horseshoe-shaped driveway. Past the landscaped grounds, the interiors of Wendy's mansion spanned over 5,700 square feet of space, with a bonus 2,500 square feet of finished basement space. The gorgeous home offers a double height foyer with a sophisticated aesthetic, including a winding grand staircase and black and white checkerboard flooring underfoot. There are five bedrooms, four full baths, and two half baths throughout over three floors, and this spacious home has a mix of both a simple design with glitz and glamour, as you might expect of Wendy. There were roomy common spaces within the New Jersey home, including a chef's kitchen, decked out in a fresh white theme with light hardwood underfoot, and a few you petite sparkly chandeliers. Personally, I would love to be cooking in this elegant kitchen. Even the breakfast nook has its own chandelier. The home offered multiple formal and casual living and entertaining rooms, some cozier than others, and there was even a second level den with massive skylight overhead, which looked pretty impressive. In the basement, another living area boasted a drop ceiling along with a wet bar. Other features of Wendy's former home included an office library with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves and beautiful cozy fireplaces throughout. Aside from the guest and family bedrooms, Wendy's former master suite was complete with a private sitting room. Not one, but two walk-in closets, as well as an upscale marble bath with steam shower. At the back of the mansion, you'll find a sprawling stone terrace with picture-perfect plants and landscaping surrounding it, as well as a grassy lawn that leads down to a densely wooded area. Now, the grounds might not offer a pool, but there is a large sports court out here. These days, Wendy has been sky high in Manhattan, leasing an apartment for a whopping 15 k per month. Her unit is located on a mid-level floor of the luxury 64 floor 50 West building in Manhattan's financial district. She's given us glimpses of her large space on Instagram, but now we've got all the details. 
Her bougie apartment spans 2,403 square feet of space with two floors, three bedrooms, one of which is on the main level and three baths throughout. Wendy's master suite also offers pretty views of the Hudson River, so it seems like the perfect location. On the main level, the home has a double height living and dining area with 20 foot ceilings, as well as an open kitchen with custom walnut cabinets, granite counters with waterfall island and top of the line appliances. Some of the add-ons here include a five burner gas stove, wine fridge and much more. The kitchen also faces a massive wall of windows for plenty of natural light and city views. Stairs between the entryway and kitchen lead to the upper floor which boasts a glass railing to overlook the lower level. The second bedroom is up here with its own ensuite as well as a small hallway with laundry room. At the end of the hall is Wendy's master suite which she's painted a moody black color and has decor such as bronze Buddha statue, a mirror chest of drawers and a flat screen TV while one wall has floor to ceiling windows with those river views. Her luxury five fixture en suite is attached with floating backlit marble vanity, heated floors and an electronic toilet. There's both an extra large tub and a separate shower here too. The other bathroom here has a marble wet wall and floor along with a custom vanity. Wendy has shared a photo of her bathroom in the past and even called it her sanctuary. Listing photos of the unit show a crisp white color scheme with contemporary decor but we know Wendy loves black walls and introduced them into this apartment as well. Thanks to her Instagram post, we can see the star hasn't given up her love of dark shaded walls and unique decorations. Wendy's also shared a photo of her living room shortly after moving in. It has black walls and white wooden flooring and she's added character with bold furniture including a button back cobalt blue armchair and a massive multicolored painting. She's also placed a variety of ornaments and vases on a retro mirror unit beneath her TV. In more recent news, Wendy has just invested in a swanky new $4.5 million apartment in the city, so no more leasing once she moves in here. Located in the heart of Manhattan, her new apartment is another high rise unit in a brand new building with many luxurious amenities available to the star. This building is the Layton Residences, located in the Upper East Side neighborhood of New York and these new homes offer both interior elegance and an outdoor space as well. The building has 38 picture perfect residences which each have an entire floor of the condominium to themselves and offer anywhere from 1 bedrooms to 4 bedrooms. The well lit units in the Layton offer floor to ceiling windows, natural materials, plenty of marble accents and heated floors throughout. Wendy's apartment is said to be 2,400 square feet of space with three beds, three baths and features like an open plan kitchen with wine fridge and granite counters. The amenities in this building are equally impressive with features like a brandy room, a solarium, chalet fireplaces, full pet spa and grooming center, lap pool, sauna and storage spaces as well as much more. Access to the residences is via private elevator and security at this property is among the best which you might expect. Wendy's decision to buy her new crib happened weeks before producers of her show revealed the host has been battling health issues and that her talk show would be taking a hiatus. So what better place to take a break? Popular host of The Daily Show Trevor Noah kicked off 2021 in a big way. About four months after selling his starter Bel Air mansion, a $21 million plus home, he decided to upgrade in the same neighborhood. This South African born comedian dropped almost $30 million on a new Bel Air mega mansion, this one even more modern looking and extravagant than the first. Aside from this spot, Trevor continues to own a primary home based in New York City as well and today we're going to check out the luxury properties that he calls home. In these videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Trevor Noah is a South African comedian, TV host, producer, writer, political commentator and actor who is best known as the host of The Daily Show, an American news program on Comedy Central with a twist. Trevor started off as a comedian, host and actor in South Africa back in 2002 before coming over to Hollywood and had several hosting roles with the South African Broadcasting Corporation.
Corporation as well. After his stand-up comedy career began to get worldwide attention, he started to appear on American late night talk shows and English panel shows, becoming the senior international correspondent for The Daily Show in 2014. Only a year later, Trevor succeeded longtime host Jon Stewart and is set to hold this position until 2022. Over the last while in showbiz, Trevor has received a handful of awards like a primetime Emmy and even being named one of the 35 most powerful people in New York media. With his success that only keeps growing, the comedian has amassed an estimated net worth of at least $40 million. You know that Trevor had to buy some property to show for it, and his starter home in Bel Air just wasn't good enough apparently. His brand new contemporary mansion is only about a mile apart from his former one, but it's even more insane and I'll be showing you guys shortly. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer and today we're bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, we post a new video daily. You guys requested this one, so without further ado, we're checking out where the Daily Show host Trevor Noah calls home, including three of his lavish properties, past and present. As you know, here we talk about celebrity houses, but have you ever wondered about Steve Will Do-It's extravagant car purchases or about Lil Uzi Vert's diamond implant? We recently started a brand new channel, Famous Fashion, where myself and some other hosts are reporting on all things celebrity fashion and purchases. Join us and be sure to subscribe. We'll link you one of our latest videos. I'm gonna tell you everything we know about it and why on earth you would wanna spend so much on something so seemingly strange. Wouldn't a diamond in the forehead feel weird? Who knows? As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. September 2020, less than two years after Trevor bought it for $20.5 million, records show that Trevor sold his palatial home in Bel Air for $21.7 million. The mansion was never listed on the open market and the all cash buyer's identity was also kept under wraps. This was Trevor's starter home, but I feel like it couldn't even be classified as such. Located in the upper area of the hillside neighborhood of Bel Air on a quiet pocket of the street, his former abode was newly built in 2018 in a super contemporary and narrow style. This mega mansion boasts over 10,000 square feet of space with five beds and eight baths in total throughout. The home was super boxy from the outside and full of glass walls and windows offering panoramic views of LA. Perched on 1.3 acres of land, Trevor could see everything from the surrounding neighborhood to the downtown skyline and even to the ocean on a clear day. The grounds surrounding the home had a sprawling grassy lawn and a large 62 foot infinity pool. The glassy home had all the modern amenities you could think of inside, even rooms like a full bar and wine cellar with a small aquarium by the looks of it, and elsewhere there was a 500 gallon saltwater aquarium. Other highlights included walls of Fleetwood doors that disappear for an indoor outdoor vibe, a home movie theater, a cigar room, and top of the line home automation system. The mansion had family rooms with fireplaces and dining rooms that opened right up to the outdoors, as well as a gourmet double island kitchen with handful of designer appliances. Trevor had quite the master suite at this pad as well. Spanning 2,200 square feet, his bedroom was bigger than many average family homes and had luxury features like two marble covered bathrooms, two showroom closets, and a spacious private patio or lounge with amazing views of the city. I mean, when you got all this at your disposal, why get rid of it so soon? Well, you may think Trevor's losing out, but not when you see his upgrade. As if that mansion wasn't modern enough, Trevor decided to purchase his current Bel Air estate only about a mile away from that one we just checked out. And it's even more aggressively contemporary. Just about four months after he sold his starter mega mansion, Trevor kicked off 2021 by purchasing an even larger home for a whopping 27.5 million, only moving down the street. His real estate upgrade is nestled in the hills of Bel Air, overlooking the upscale country club, and the right-angled home has been dubbed an iconic architectural statement. The mansion was completed in 2014 and designed by Harvard-trained architect Mark Rios as a personal residence for himself and his partner. The 11,000 square foot home was originally priced at $36 million, but it seems Trevor scored himself 
somewhat of a deal. The hillside mansion sits on nearly an acre of land and really embraces the LA trend of indoor-outdoor living. Inside, there are six beds, 9.5 baths, and a ton of floor-to-ceiling glass doors and windows, which let you gaze out across the city into the ocean. The home is hidden behind a wall of bamboo and inspired by the Japanese design of simplicity and soothing aesthetics. It's fitted with materials like stone, wood, bronze, and glass throughout, and there are large common spaces like a sun-filled living room and grand-scale dining room to enjoy. Trevor's minimalistic kitchen boasts oak cabinets, and there's also a Japanese-style spa with views over the Santa Monica Mountains. On the lowest level of his home, each room has a full wall of retractable windows, and the main level shows off most of the public spaces, including more than one family room, some with TVs, while others remain more formal. This staircase made of imported German wood leads to the private upper floor where there are four ensuite guest bedrooms and Trevor's new master suite with dual stone floored baths and two dressing rooms to match. The home also boasts other amenities like a home office, a library, a gym, a wine cellar, a full-time security office, and of course, an elevator. Trevor's modern mansion also has a unique penthouse level dedicated to a top-of-the-line home theater, where walls disappear by simply pressing a button to an impressive rooftop deck with bar and a lounge. The property surrounding the home is just as breathtaking as all of those features we just looked at, including the infinity pool perched over the basement level rooms. Elsewhere, there is a small cabana with wet bar, barbecue station, and a rooftop lounge. While Trevor's Bel Air homes are insane, we seem to forget that he's still still spends the majority of his time on the East Coast. After taking the role on The Daily Show, his hard work paid off and the comedian was able to purchase his $10 million penthouse apartment in the same building he was formerly renting a place. The duplex is located in the Manhattan neighborhood of Hell's Kitchen, super close to where he films The Daily Show. Trevor bought this gorgeous residence back in 2017 and it's still the one he currently lives at, even spending the majority of the pandemic year and quarantine at this Manhattan property. His New York home has three beds, two ensuite baths and 3,600 square feet of space throughout, as well as an additional 930 square foot wraparound terrace for amazing views of Manhattan. And he does take up the 17th floor and 18th floor, so I bet those are some amazing views. There are high ceilings, a sleek and modern design, and as you might have guessed, two levels. The second story of Noah's apartment is entirely devoted to Trevor's private and spacious master suite. His bedroom boasts 14 foot ceilings and large arched windows, as well as a large ensuite with glass enclosed shower stall. Trevor's apartment has a bright aesthetic with windows all over, and you can even catch a glimpse of the Empire State Building or the Hudson River from the amazing. Howard Stern is pretty much the most iconic shock jock of the era and his mansions, well, they're just as shocking. He and his wife Beth currently own three homes and his property portfolio at the moment is worth over a hundred million. The Stearns have a mega penthouse in the heart of New York City, which is apparently five units combined, a castle in the Hamptons, and a mansion in Palm Beach that costs over $50 million alone. We'll give you all the details on Howard's properties and I'll warn you, they're pretty out of this world. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own, place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Howard Allen Stern is a radio and TV personality and author who's best known for this outspoken and one-of-a-kind radio show, The Howard Stern Show. It gained popularity when it was nationally syndicated on old school radio from 1986 up until 2005, and then he began broadcasting on Sirius XM satellite radio as of 2006. Despite all his awards and accomplishments, Stern also became the most fined radio host for content considered indecent. Whatever your opinion on the man is, his honor interview interviews with today's biggest celebrities are legendary. If Howard likes you, they can be revealing and insightful like when Katy Perry famously opened up about her struggle with depression on his show. But if he doesn't like you, it can turn nasty. The self-proclaimed king of all media has numerous successes outside radio too, such as producing late night TV shows, pay-per-view events, and writing books two of which became New York Times bestsellers. Stern became one of the highest paid radio figures after signing his 2004 deal with Sirius worth a whopping 500 million. All things considered, the man has a current estimated net worth of at least $650 million. Howard married his second wife, Beth Ostrowski Stern in 2008, and reportedly she's just about the only person who can keep him in line. And as we'll see in this video, she's got a flair for interior design that's evident at their three mansions. 
Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer and today we're bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. I noticed 95% of you watching aren't subscribed so be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post a new video daily. We'll be taking a look at where radio host extraordinaire Howard Stern calls home with his wife, their three properties in New York and Palm Beach. If you like these videos, ring that bell for notifications. We've also done house tours on famous couples like Gene Simmons and Shannon Tweed and we'll link to some at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat and as usual let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. Now let's get into this video. First up is Howard's New York City Mega Penthouse. Unfortunately, we don't have interior pics of his specific unit or units, but we can get an idea of the interior design from similar apartments in the same building. Stern bought five separate units in NYC's Millennium Building and currently owns the whole of the top two floors, which is valued somewhere around 21 million. The Millennium Tower is in the heart of Manhattan and is a high-rise, mixed-use building that occupies a full city block bordering Broadway, Columbus Avenue, and 67 and 68th streets. The 47 story tower is located in a prime Upper West Side location just north of the Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts and is one of the tallest structures in the area. In 1998, records show that Howard first dropped 4.75 million for a 3,138 square foot unit on the 54th floor of the building as well as the adjoining 1,011 square foot unit which cost him 995K. This was just the beginning of his penthouse. Later on in 2008, Stern threw down 15.1 million for two apartments on the floor directly below the ones he already owns. These two units added a total of 2,546 square feet to his growing mansion in the sky. While sources say Howard bought a total of five units, it's just the four that I read about, but either way, we can conclude his space the millennium is massive. The units here offer generous and varied layouts, but we can assume with the square footage of Howard's that they're open plan. We can see the apartment have great floor to ceiling windows as well as views of Central Park. Kitchens and bathrooms are equipped with premium fixtures and top the line appliances. Among the Millennium Tower's amenities are a 24-hour doorman, concierge service, a health club, and a pool. Considering its ideal location, there are many restaurants and shops nearby in Lincoln Square and Columbus Circle. Way back in 2005, Howard dropped $20 million on an empty lot in Southampton, New York. Considering he had a spot in the city, of course, a getaway in the posh and exclusive Hamptons was necessary. We all know something jaw-dropping was about to be built here, and that's exactly what happened. While the home was being built, Stern was renting out a nearby home for a ported $800,000 a month. Anyways, his oceanfront mansion resembles a castle, and while he was already paying a crazy amount for the lot itself, the total property value now is estimated to be about $65 to $100 million. Stern worked with an architect to create the perfect space, equipped with multiple stone fireplaces, gorgeous chandeliers and lights, high ceilings, and all the fixings. According to plans filed with the town, the three-level custom-built mansion measures over 16,000 square feet with eight beds and 12 bathrooms. From imported marble countertops to the guitar collection, no expense was spared. Howard's foyer is two stories with a balcony overlooking the bottom floor. Among the many living spaces, there's a great room with fireplace and windows looking out to the water, as well as a massive wood-paneled library slash study with TV and yet another fireplace. In fact, it looks like there's a fireplace in almost every room. We can also see the beautiful office where I'm sure Stern carries out his business deals. Here there are also window lined walls and a balcony facing the ocean. Throughout the mansion there are gorgeous hallways lined with marble and antique light fixtures. And the formal dining room is light and bright with beamed ceilings. The shock jock and his wife Beth share a master bedroom spanning approximately 1500 square feet with a private balcony and attached office, his and hers baths, and separate dressing rooms. Perhaps one of the coolest parts of their mansion is what I'll call the recreation area. Here we can see a games room with pool table, full bar, sitting room, fireplace, and Howard's guitars on display. Not to mention the couple also has a full bowling alley. Other features of Stern's Hamptons estate include a wine cellar with tasting room and several guest suites scattered throughout the mansion. Outside on the property, there's also a stunning pool and spa looking out over the water and attached cabana. Recently, Howard revealed his new basement recording studio too, and I'll just 
assume that's at this home. I mean, if he had to pick a spot to stay throughout 2020, it would definitely be this place. In 2018, it was reported that Howard and Beth were also the buyers behind a $52 million purchase of a palatial estate in Palm Beach, Florida. This humongous and gorgeous mansion sits on 3.25 acres of oceanfront and offers the couple a retreat when they want to leave the state of New York. While much like the New York condo, we don't have interior photos of the mansion, we do have the details. Two buildings sit on the sprawling lot with the main mansion clocking in 18,673 square feet of space and 12 bedrooms. The smaller structure has 1,196 square feet and is likely the guest house. The palm tree line property not only sits on the beach but offers grassy lawns, gardens, and a sparkling blue pool. Apparently, Howard and Beth extensively renovated the mansion after moving in. And while I don't know much more than that, I do know Beth got a closet at this home spanning 1,000 square feet in itself. Despite the beauty of their Florida getaway, it's reported the two were hit with a mind blowing tax bill of 900 3k. Yikes, at least they can afford it. All right, guys and girls, I think I'm going to bring this house tour to an end here. After looking at Howard Stern's three beautiful and outrageously expensive properties, what did you think? I know he couldn't see much of the interior for a couple of the places, but if his Hamptons castle is anything to go by, you already know the interior design is flawless. I would rate that Hamptons mansion a 9.5 out of 10. It's super beautiful, but a little too big for me. What would you guys rate it? Joe Rogan is an American comedian, actor, martial arts expert, UFC commentator, podcaster, and all around badass who has recently just increased his net worth profile to a staggering $100 million. Joe first came to the public's attention after appearing in news radio before going on to host the hit reality series Fear Factor and combining his talent for entertainment with his passion for martial arts by joining forces with UFC to help popularize MMA. But it would be his late career renaissance where he reinvented himself as one of the most popular podcasters on the internet that would have him swimming in so much dough he could afford to buy a $5 million home in Bell Canyon, California. It's been rumored that Joe Rogan makes as much as $30 million a year for ad reads and YouTube advertising through his podcast. And while that may sound like a whole lot, it's only a drop in the bucket compared to the deal Joe just signed with Spotify to become the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan experience for reported a hundred million dollars. That's why I signed with Spotify. <laughs> I'm like, I got plans. I'm riding this wave right into the rocks. <laughs> Come with me! With the news of his contract making headlines all over the world, what better time than now to take a look at the house of a bona fide success story? Today, I'm taking you through Joe's mansion in Bell Canyon, California, as well as the 14,000 square foot warehouse he uses as a studio for his podcast company, which is so much more than simply that, even if it was pretty empty when he first moved in. I'll also check in on a recent rumor that despite having just purchased this new amazing home, Joe is already thinking about his next move. And so the hey. taxes here are ridiculous. Hey guys, it's Kara, and today we're taking a look at the home and workplace of the world's most infamous podcaster and strongman comedian, Joe Rogan, here for you on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified when we post so you can always be up to date. We've also done house tours and stars like Shaquille O'Neal and Floyd Mayweather, and we'll link to some at the end. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and as usual, let me know whose house tour is next in those comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Last year, Joe spent nearly $5 million on this amazing mansion in Bell Canyon, California. Joe has called Bell Canyon home since purchasing his first starter home for $2.2 million back in 2003, and while that house was no doubt nice, it probably couldn't hold a candle to his new one. According to Billionaire World News, Bell Canyon is one of Southern California's wealthiest communities, and one look at this home proves it. To start with, a major reason this area is so expensive is due to its remote location in the Ventura County boundaries, which means that Joe gets to enjoy the entirety of this open concept home in absolute peace and quiet. He's got gorgeous balconies that look out onto rolling hills populated with other beautiful homes and a heavily wooded area. Nestled snugly onto one of those balconies is a magnificent infinity pool for Joe and his family to get some laps in as well as a fire pit and a hot tub. Inside the house features 8720 
20 square feet of living space, including eight bedrooms and nine bathrooms. As soon as you walk in the front door to his home, you can see almost the entire place, including down into the bottom floor, the dining room, out onto the patio, and into any of the multiple living spaces. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this house is one giant room separated by glass walls and a second floor. This design ensures that there's no shortage of natural light and the high ceilings coupled with the white walls also help keep the space as bright as possible. Joe's master bedroom is on the bottom floor of his mansion. And like every other room in his home, the bedroom is completely open both in terms of the indoor space and allowing for quick access to the outside, which means that Joe gets to enjoy views like this one from the comfort of his own bed on a regular basis. On the second floor is a cozy seating area with another tremendous view. This space continues on to the dining room and a more casual living space complete with a fireplace and television. To the right of this living room is Joe's kitchen, the place where he cooks up all his meat. Joe's diet has become widely publicized on his show and he spends a lot of time talking about his meals made up of a variety of different proteins. But the real question is the one that's on Sebastian's mind. For me, I'm thinking how the hell does he get the meat uh, like from from top to bottom, like medium rare throughout. You know, mm. like th that's uh, for me. That's more of a learn. A le <laughs> I can teach you, Sebastian. I can teach you. You know so, what the key is? Cooking it slowly. That's okay. the key. Of course, when you're cooking meat as often as Joe does, you need an elite grill to get the most taste out of it. Joe has opted for a Traeger grill, which can easily set you back a few thousand dollars. But your guests will be awestruck whenever you open up this Tesla of grills. Happy Easter, everybody. I'm out here cooking a leg of lamb for Easter on the Traeger grill, my favorite way to cook. And uh, about to check it out right now. It's done. Oh my goodness, look at that. I have uh, all these little slices in here and I inserted pieces of garlic and rosemary. Oh, this smells so good. Happy Easter. Is it just me or did it sound like a fighter jet was roaring up after he opened that bad boy up? That's one powerful grill. Now if you've ever watched Joe's show, then you know that he loves to both pamper himself and pump some mad iron. So of course he has spots in his home to do both of these things. He's got a fully equipped home gym and after spending some time ripping off some reps in there, he likes to calm his body down in his beautifully lit bathroom, which looks like the very definition of elegance. Now that we've taken a look inside his home, let's visit the other place that Joe spends a good portion of his day, the 14,000 square foot warehouse where he films his podcast located in Woodland Hills, California. This self-described man cave is not only where Joe works day in and day out, it's where he makes his dreams a reality and surrounds himself with everything he could possibly want at his fingertips. We all know hobbies are a source of spending and Joe has decked his entire studio out in all of his favorite things. Let's start with his digital archery range. Bullseye! We're coming back! That's bullshit. Quartering two? That was a perfect shot. I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> oh, shit. He's in three. I want to see bullseyes in a row. Time needs a bullseye. How many workplaces do you know that can feature something like that? I can't think of any. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Joe also got a private sports and conditioning gym on site that includes a sauna and a pool table. Shoot, uh, you know, any color or any solid, or any stripe rather, or any solid. But whereas in uh, nine ball, you're playing in rotation, so every shot, there's no options. You're either hitting you're either solids or, or stripes. No, no, you're, nine ball is, you're shooting the balls one through nine. The gym looks the part of a commercial gym with its mirrored walls, rubber flooring, high ceilings, and proper lighting. It's chock full of the latest and greatest in equipment, including Joe's own Onnit brand, which includes one of Joe's favorite products, kettlebells. The strength and conditioning side of the gym was supplied by Rogue Fitness, a brand that Rogan has been using for years now, and there's even a combat side to the gym, which features Fuji mats, heavy bags, and a bag rack system. When he's done getting his training in, he can quickly cool down with the latest in athletic technologies, a cryogenic chamber, as well as relax in his sensory deprivation tank and experience some natural DMT in all of its mind-enhancing glory. Essentially, it's a tank filled with water that has a thousand pounds of salt in it. 
you float, you don't feel the water because it's heated to the same temperature as your skin, you don't hear anything, you don't see anything, and uh, I like to go in there and think about sh And all of this before we even get to the highlight of his space, the recording studio itself, which is jam-packed with the latest and greatest tools to make sure that Joe's always sounding as good as he looks. After taking a look at the amazing setups Joe both has in his home and the workplace, you might be surprised to learn that he's thinking about taking a big step. If California continues to be this restrictive, yeah. I don't know if this is a good place to live. First of all, it's extremely expensive. The yeah. taxes here are ridiculous. Yeah. And if they really say that we can't do stand-up until 2022 or some shit like that, uh -huh. like, I might jet. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'm not kidding. This is silly. I don't need to be here. The only reason why I'm here is that I'm close to people like you. Right. I'm, a lot of my friends live here. Yeah. The store is here. But if they, if they won't let us do the store, but we could do stand-up other places, why would we stay here? Mm, where in Texas, though? I don't know, man. Hmm. In Austin. I like Austin a lot. I like Dallas a lot. I like Houston, but... Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I would live in Houston. I would it's definitely live very in... very humid there. Yeah. That's right. It sounds like Joe is packing up his belongings sometime soon and setting his sights for the great state of Texas. I don't know about you guys, but after getting a look at how he lives, the only question I have is why. Then I remembered something. Texas Fargo's individual income tax, which means that $100 million contract Joe just signed, can be all his if he makes the move. For those of you wondering, California, where Joe currently lives, would subject that contract to 13.3% in taxes, which means that Joe can save about $13 million with the switch. Hey, I'm generally someone who believes in the benefits taxation can supply to the general population. When you're making money like that, it's just something that you've got to at least consider, regardless of what you actually end up doing. As for where Joe will live once he gets to Texas, well, that's still up in the air. At the very least, there's been no new house purchase that's been announced yet. I am ordinary in so many ways, except for God has given me a mission field in the entertainment world for the last four and a half decades. Former American television host Kathy Lee Gifford is a multi-talented performer, best known for her role as the co-host of Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, as well as her stint with NBC's Today. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Over the years, this multiple Emmy nominee sunk a considerable amount of her television paychecks into some significant real estate investments, and one of the first she ever secured for herself was an 11,419 square foot property in Florida's Key Largo. Kathy picked this place up back in 1998 for $3.9 million. Located in what's known as the Ocean Reef Club, Kathy's home is part of an exclusive community for the very rich, one that started off as a fish camp in 1948 and developed into a neighborhood with two eight-hole championship golf courses, a swimming lagoon, a marina, its own fire station, and a fully staffed medical center. Oh, and did I mention there's also a landing strip located on site as well as a flying club, formal restaurants, specialty shops, and two dog parks. One for small pups and one for larger ones. Man, this community has really thought of everything, haven't they? Getting back to the house, however, it's a vaguely Mediterranean red tiled roofed mansion. It's been classically designed with subtle French inspired heritage. It sits on the water's edge on a nearly half acre parcel of land and inside its walls are eight bedrooms, eight bathrooms, as well as three elevator serviced floors. Wrought iron accented glass doors that have been set into a massive glass arch open at the front of the home and lead into a gigantic atrium. Here, you'll find rock, foliage, and water features backed by a brick wall and surround a wrought iron staircase. Those stairs take you to the great room, which boasts a double height coffered ceiling, a fireplace that's been wedged in between two built-in bookshelves, and a room-wide wall of glass panels that slide open to reveal the exterior swimming pool. Other living spaces include both a formal and informal dining room, as well as a pretty ordinary looking kitchen with a center island, snow white solid countertops, and dark reddish brown cabinets. 
As for the bedrooms, well, they've been sprinkled throughout the house and include a main floor master suite with a somewhat wacky palm tree mural plastered on its tray ceiling, as well as some glass doors provide access to the pool. And not far from there, you'll find a junior bedroom suite that offers its very own private sunset view terrace. Meanwhile, the lower level measures around 4,000 square feet and offers a fitness room with a view of the nearby water, as well as a bunk room lined with at least three sets of children's bunk beds. Out back is a massive travertine tile terrace that's been enclosed and screened in to keep all those Florida bugs from being a nuisance, making for a more relaxed outdoor entertainment environment. Here is where you'll also find the swimming pool and spa, a marble fire pit, a waterside dining pavilion with accompanying outdoor kitchen, a small dock for jet skis, and a much larger one for any yachts that might be pulling up to Kathy's home for a visit. After owning this property for two decades, Kathy would list her picturesque home for $10.5 million. It's unclear if she's ever found a buyer, but if I was her, I wouldn't be moving on from something as nice as this. Then again, I don't own three more homes like Kathy does, so let's head to one of those next. While Kathy has owned her Florida property for an extended period of time, it's always operated as a home away from home. For the most part, Kathy's main residence for the last 20 years has been this 13,000 square foot 1930s Gatsby style mansion. This stunning home sits on nearly three acres of waterfront property in the posh Greenwich, Connecticut. She and her late husband, former NFL player Frank Gifford, bought this home in 1994 for a reported $7.8 million. The hulking U-shaped mansion sits behind a long and winding driveway flanked with carefully clipped hedges and is said to have nine bedrooms and 10 full baths along alongside three half baths. Over the years, Kathy often made it quite clear how much this home meant to her. Like when she invited NBC's Today over to check out her epic backyard, a location that she's described in the past as my favorite spot. Out here, the gated estate includes a kidney-shaped swimming pool with a pool house, as well as a tennis court and an entertainment terrace. There's also a great stretch of lawn and a variety of stone paved waterside terraces that can be used for al fresco dining with views over the Long Island Sound. As nice as it may look right now, back in 2012, Hurricane Sandy did a number on this property. So Kathy wound up transforming several of the hardest hit areas into spaces the whole family could enjoy once again. This overhaul included turning a damaged water slide into a spot called Bambino's Beach Bar, named after one of the the family's dogs. Now, it's where Kathy's friends and family gather whenever they have something to celebrate, like say Kathy's Today Show co-host Hoda's 50th birthday, and even Kathy's own 60th birthday. Another favorite part of this property is what Kathy calls Praise Point, a spot situated at the end of the yard where her kids once played when they were much younger. But after living in this home for so long, Kathy's husband would pass away, and the house became too big and full of memories for her to really enjoy on her own any longer. She explained this to NBC's Today, telling them, It came to feel like a mortuary with just me there alone, and I said I need to make a new life for myself or this one's gonna kill me. The loneliness was crippling. But rather than sell a place that holds such a special place in her heart, Kathy wound up giving it to her son instead so that he and his wife could start a family of their own there. Then she turned her sights south, more specifically, to Tennessee. Since making her way from Connecticut to Music City in 2018, Kathy Lee has been living in a gorgeous and comfortable home located just outside of Franklin, Tennessee. When discussing her move with Nashville Edit, she told them what inspired her to make the change, stating, What's so interesting about Nashville is that a dinner party often turns into a bunch of talented friends taking your guitar off the wall and writing a song. Then, out of nowhere, you've got a song to take to the studio. It's reported that Kathy first purchased a brownstone mansion in October 2018 for $1.25 million. And while she still owns this piece of property, she never spent much time there. Cause less than a year later, she was buying a second home in the same neighborhood in July of 2019 for $3.7 million. This 7,965 square foot two-story brownstone is said to be fitted with a handful of bedrooms and bathrooms as well as a stunning kitchen and a completely finished basement. 
And while we don't have too many details when it comes to the inside of her new digs, Kathy has shared the occasional glimpse on Instagram. For example, this look into her pristine kitchen with its granite countertops, wooden cabinets, and white flowers on display. Around the corner from the kitchen is Kathy's dining room, which she's decked out with a stunning table, dark blue chairs, and one-of-a-kind art pieces hanging off her brick accent wall. Elsewhere, the home boasts vaulted ceilings and an array of other intricate details. Meanwhile, over in Kathy Lee's living room, you'll discover a gorgeous fireplace with some admirable woodwork and furniture that's no doubt covered in dog hair. Well, we can assume, right? And the property is even outfitted with a home office where Kathy stores the many awards that she's managed to collect for herself over the years. Last but not least is her enormous outdoor space that her dogs take full advantage of. Not only does she have a lovely little glass table set out here, her landscaping is picture perfect. Now that she's been living in Tennessee for nearly five years, things couldn't be going much better for Kathy. Not only does she love her new home, but she even revealed in April 2021 that she's been dating a new man, though she won't reveal his name to the public. But most important of all is how she's fitting in with her new community. She told NBC's Today, It's a culture of kindness in Nashville, and they are authentically kind. They're joyful, they have so much fun. Music everywhere. There are barbecues, everything is Americana. Like when I was growing up. Well, sounds to me like Kathy Lee has finally found her own little corner of paradise. Judy Justice debuts today, and you will notice some significant changes. Well, she remains as sharp and witty as ever. Are you prepared to enter the real estate holdings of Judge Judy Sheedlin? Well, ready or not, that's exactly what's about to happen. Judge Judy is famous for her willingness to come down hard on nearly anyone, and she's been gracing her TV screens for well over two decades, winning the heart of many. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you wanna see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. In fact, after a total of 25 seasons, her legendary series brought in an average of around 10 million viewers a day, making her a major Hollywood success story to the tune of a $440 million net worth. If I knew a judge could make that kind of money, I would have paid a lot closer attention during my high school civics course, I can tell you that. Of course, Judy knows exactly how to invest that money as well. Take, for instance, her recent decision to scoop up this beautiful Newport, Rhode Island home. And Judy bought the place in July of 2018, and according to a press release from the Newport Daily News, her brand new estate that overlooks the ocean side is one of the highest priced property sales in Rhode Island, coming in at $9 million. The original owner of the estate, Campbell Soup Heiress, Dorrance Hill Hamilton, originally listed the property for $12.5 million. But following her death in 2013, the price of the property would reduce significantly over the years. Eventually, Judy swept in to buy the nearly 15,000 square foot home, making it hers permanently. The six bedroom, eight bathroom residence boasts a number of highlights that include a two story entrance hall, as well as a living room with a floor to ceiling stone fireplace that needs to be seen to be believed and is finished off with some classy wood paneled walls. Her kitchen has been crafted with custom made cabinets and a kitchen island that offers both a marble countertop as well as a butcher block section. There's even a raised area for breakfast bar seating and only a few feet away from there is a charming breakfast nook surrounded by wraparound windows. Whenever Judy's looking to relax and unwind after a long day of work, she has her fair share of options to choose from, either her gorgeous wood paneled study with a cozy looking fireplace or in her uniquely decorated emerald green dining room. And when it comes to her new bedrooms, the most fascinating thing about them is definitely their use of wallpaper. The master suite has been done up in all yellow everything, while guests can take their pick from a pair of rooms that channel the greenery of the property's surrounding forest. Installed elsewhere is state-of-the-art technology, including geothermal heating and cooling in the floors, as well as an elevator. And over in her gorgeous backyard, you'll discover not only an outdoor kitchen, but a sheltered sitting area and a small-sized pool set directly into the deck. 
Basically what I'm trying to say is no expense was spared in the creation of this beautiful sanctuary. Then again, the same could easily be said for all of Judy's numerous homes. And if her honor ever feels like decamping somewhere else, well, it's not like she doesn't have choices, some of which reside down south in Naples, Florida. Back in 2005, Judge Judy and her hubby Judge Jerry bought themselves a golf front penthouse pad in Naples, Florida for a grand total of $6.9 million. This 8,550 square foot unit is a 16th floor penthouse suite that offers four bedrooms, six baths, two private elevators, a gorgeous wraparound sitting area, and its very own sauna. In other words, despite technically being an apartment, this home boasts plenty of space and the type of accommodations you're most likely to find in a resort. This includes a spacious gourmet kitchen with marble countertops and a large gas range stovetop. There's also a living room with enough space to fit an entire dining room table off to the one side. Oh, and did I mention the separate areas for a library and home office? According to property listings, Judy's primary suite features dual his and hers bathrooms, a walk-in wardrobe, and not far from there is a nanny suite that comes complete with its own kitchenette. If you're worried that Judy wouldn't be seeing much of that Florida son while living in an apartment, don't fret too much because her unit also comes with access to a pool deck cabana. After owning this property for close to eight years, Judy and her husband would decide to move on and pick themselves up a 10,000 square foot mansion just down the street for a reported $8.9 million after listing their previous penthouse for a bit more than that, 11 million to be exact. Now there's less known about this new property than her penthouse, but reports suggest the home boasts six bedrooms and 11 baths baths with a comfortable and cozy living room that includes a wet bar in the back. Other unique highlights are said to include a black marble floor foyer with a gigantic central staircase, as well as a professional grade kitchen with a breakfast bar and massive island. Then there's the exterior which features a lush landscaped backyard with not one, not two, but three waterfalls, a spa, and an elegant gazebo located next to a lagoon style pool. Pretty nice, right? And yet neither of these Florida properties or her new home in Rhode Island are Judy's main residence. For that, we have to travel to Greenwich, Connecticut. For the past decade and a half, Judge Judy's home base has been her gorgeous stone mansion, situated on 12.5 acres in the extremely affluent Greenwich, Connecticut. Property records suggest that Judy bought the estate back in September of 2007 for $13.2 million. And various online reports state that she had the original structure on the premises demolished to make way for her brand new 20,000 square foot home. With this being her main home for so long, details on the interior have been kept to a bare minimum. But aerial photos suggest that the estate has a large gatehouse, likely for security, as well as a carriage house, a massive motor court, stretches of green lawns, formal gardens, a swimming pool, and a cabana with a deep shaded patio. One other detail we know about this place is that Variety once reported the taxes on the property skyrocketed after Judy was done with her renovations. I'm talking to around 230 30 thousand dollars a year. Speaking of how Judge Judy earns her dough, did you know that she only generally works about 52 days a year? It's true. She manages to film all of her episodes for each season in that relatively a short amount of time. And yet she does so while living in another residence, this one located near where she films in Los Angeles, California. In 2013, Judge Judy reportedly paid $10.7 million for a 4,680 square foot apartment in Beverly Hills. Both Hosting five bedrooms as well as three and a half bathrooms, this unit is located inside the swanky building once known as Montage Beverly Hills. Judy's home away from home is said to feature top of the line amenities, not the least of which are the seven balconies scattered about the property and four underground parking spaces. The floor plan included with online marketing materials for the small number of apartments here suggests that Judy's new upper floor unit is entered through a long L-shaped foyer. Not far from there is a coat closet, a powder room, a petite library, as well as a much larger temperature controlled walk-in wine cellar. There's also a 42 foot long living room with a fireplace that leads out to a narrow balcony with low rise panoramic views of the city, mountains and sky. The formal dining room also opens up to a balcony which connects through a kitchen that comes well equipped with a center work island and walk-in pantry. 
Back in the living room, a set of double doors open to a bedroom slash den, while a second set of double doors leads to the bedroom wing, where two bedrooms share a sizable bathroom. The master suite occupies a prime position at the tail end of the hall and was a pair of roomy walk-in closets and a spacious bedroom with direct access to another balcony. Meanwhile, the attached bathroom is a couple of sinks with a makeup vanity, a separate tub and stall shower, as well as his and hers toilet cubicles. Last but not least, there's a guest suite that provides visitors with a mini balcony of their own as well as a walk-in closet and a private bath. In case you're wondering, Montage Beverly Hills is now referred to as the Mayborn Beverly Hills, and it offers residents an army of discreet staff to cater to their every need, including well-connected concierge and super deluxe amenities such as a spa and fitness facility, even a rooftop swimming pool. There are also five-star hotel services like room service and housekeeping. As an added bonus, security is said to be extremely tight. Gail King is an American journalist, author, magazine editor, and former co-host of CBS This Morning, as well as the serious radio series Gail King in the House. But let's be honest, the one thing all of us know her best for is her unshakable friendship with one of the richest people on the planet, Oprah Winfrey. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you wanna see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. These two became best friends way back when in 1976 while they were both working at WJZ TV in Baltimore, Maryland. Little did they know that nearly 50 years later they'd still be playing a huge role in one another's lives. I'll get into the details on how as we go along, but for now we are gonna kick today's tour off with a peek inside Gail's stunning New York City penthouse. Located on East 57th Street and situated on the 36th floor of a prominent Big Apple skyscraper, Gail King bought this luxurious apartment back in 2008 for $7.1 million. Boasting 2,530 square feet, Gail's enviable living arrangement includes 12 foot tall ceilings, gorgeous walnut flooring all throughout, as well as three bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms. According to listing details, the most jaw-dropping spot in the entire home, however, is her picture-perfect master suite that not only features three walk-in closets, two of which even have windows, but an ensuite with a spa tub and a separate glass shower. Of course, there's also a stunning eating kitchen that comes complete with an entire set of Viking brand appliances, as well as a dining room with some unique wallpaper. Better yet, for outdoor entertainment, Gail's penthouse also comes with its very own 750 square foot wraparound terrace that provides one of a kind views of the George Washington Bridge as well as the city below. A few years after moving into this place, Gail teamed up with interior designer Nate Burkus to give fans an inside look at her home. Unfortunately, the video clip of that event appears to be lost to time, but Gail would reveal during the course of that conversation that she had painted the ceiling of every single room a different color at the suggestion of her longtime friend Oprah. Since then, Gail has occasionally provided her fans glimpses of the interior of this home on social media, especially during the pandemic era, when she was stuck inside with nowhere to go. Just like that time, we got a taste of Gail's eclectic decor. Well, at least she had a pretty amazing home to recuperate in. We got an even better look at Gail's home when she shared some behind the scenes images from her home studio setup while working from home inside her family room. As you can see from those pictures, Gail's taste runs a little off the beaten path. It includes a passion for bright yellow lounge chairs that clash with the rest of her furnishings, like those wood paneled cabinets and floors that are covered in patterned rugs. Well, want to know something interesting? It was actually Oprah who bought this home in the first place. According to her property records, it was her LLC listed on the official paperwork. In other words, Oprah likely acted as Gail's landlord and this wasn't the first time that they had made this arrangement either. While Gail King's former mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut might not measure up to Oprah's grand 20,000 square foot palace in Montecito, California, the one thing that both properties have in common is that technically speaking, Oprah owns the both of them. 
Much like with Gail's New York City penthouse, Oprah's shell company that was listed on the deed to this property when it was bought in 2000 for a reported $3.6 million. Gail got everything Oprah paid for and then some, with a four story colonial home that includes 10,433 square feet, along with a two story front foyer with a grand staircase, six bedrooms, seven full bathrooms, as well as three and a half powder rooms. Now, considering how long ago Gail used to live here, details on the interior are slim, but what I can tell you is that the home was said to include deluxe amenities such as four fireplaces, a three car garage, a home theater, and a stunning third floor family room with window alcoves as well as a wet bar. In addition to the home's five regular size bedrooms, her master suite boasted a gigantic sitting room and a dressing room jam packed with the type of fits that you'd expect to discover in the closet of a woman who's friends with one of the richest people on the planet. With a home this big, you you would expect the exterior to be equally spectacular, and this property certainly doesn't disappoint. Not only is there a swimming pool with an attached spa out back, but there's enough surrounding space that Gail and Obra could go for a hike together and probably wind up getting lost if they weren't careful. After moving into this mansion during the dawn of the new millennium, Gail would own the property for close to 15 years before listing it in 2015 and agreeing to sell it for $3.1 million, roughly 500,000 less than what was paid. Uh, I can't imagine Oprah was too pleased to eat that loss, but Gail made up for it by stepping up to the plate and providing her home for Oprah to use during a very important interview. Back in March of 2021, Oprah sat down for a highly anticipated and exclusive conversation with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry that was aired in 68 countries around the world. But here's the thing, according to reports, Oprah didn't shoot this sit down meeting at her own home. Instead, she used Gail's Los Angeles mansion as the perfect backdrop. That's how Gail became more or less the uncredited star of this two hour discussion, which saw Meghan and Harry touch on the difficulties that came along with stepping down as senior royals. They didn't want him to be a prince, not knowing what the gender would be, which would be different from protocol. As you can tell from all that lovely footage, the one area of Gail's LA compound we really got a taste for was its secluded 360 degrees of shrubbery that provided complete privacy for Oprah's convo. Not only is this stunning courtyard surrounded by epic stone pillars, but the greenery is picture perfect, thanks in large part to those humongous trees and potted plants. Over on social media, Gail's also given us a glance at the home's stylish living room, which features neutral walls and some lovely pale green accents, including a gorgeous floral arrangement displayed on Gail's dining room table, as well as some plush and comfy chairs. There are even striking sculptures here which tie the space together. As for the exterior, well that's been kept under tighter wraps, but thanks to a video Gail shared on Instagram, we do know that the front of her home includes some perfectly manicured grass and a smooth stone walkway made in the shape of a cross. We've been ordering them on this thing called Instacart. We've been ordering avocados. Like, so every, like every like other day. Of course, considering what we've now discovered about her previous properties, the question is whether or not Gail actually owns this mansion or if Oprah owns some of the mansions. Considering Oprah's immense real estate portfolio, I mean, the queen of all media might just own this home as well, but I'm sure renting it out to her best friend makes her feel even better than if she lived here herself. Plus, this way they get to live in such close proximity to one another that they're only ever a short golf cart trip away. Well, there you have it, everyone. That'll bring this look into the homes of Gail King to a close. Welcome to Madronigal, a matchless land portfolio and residential sanctuary. Arrive to a grand two-story atrium with a towering fireplace and abundant natural light. In September 2022, Oprah Winfrey decided to sell one of her large estates in Montecito, California, in two separate transactions, which combined for around $17 million. She purchased the property only a year earlier in 2021 for $10.5 million and has sold each parcel to friends of hers, one being Jennifer Aniston, who purchased the Mediterranean main house property for almost $14.8 million. A far cry from the Mississippi wood shack Oprah grew up in, she now 
now presides over a handful of multi-million dollar homes in her real estate portfolio. The successful billionaire continues to own the $30 million compound beside the spot she recently sold to Aniston and of course her main residence called Promised Land, which is a sprawling 66 acre estate with 20,000 square foot mansion also in Montecito. And those are just a couple of Oprah's properties. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year. So go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses. And even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. While Oprah Winfrey lords over multiple homes, she added one to her portfolio in 2021, but offloaded it just a couple of months ago to a particularly famous friend. In early 2021, the media mogul dished out a reported $10.5 million on a multi-parcel spread in her favorite area of Montecito, California, which she bought off of New York hedge fund manager, Fred Schumann and his wife. They're the ones who put together the 2.1 acre spread over many years. Recently, Montecito has become a hot spot for celebrity real estate, where the likes of famous home flippers such as Ellen DeGeneres and Adam Levine have collected fortunes from buying and selling some of the area's richest estates. We also know that Oprah herself loves Montecito due to the fact that she owns multiple properties here, including her longtime main residence, Promised Land. This property, which Oprah recently sold in two separate transactions, included a Mediterranean main mansion, two small cottages, and stunning grounds. The two transactions of her property reportedly earned Oprah a total of around $17 million. She split the estate in two and both buyers were her friends. The first sale going through in mid-August 2022, which was the half with the small cottages, selling for $2.3 million to her personal trainer and property manager, Bob Green. Then a week later or so, Oprah sold the other half, which included the main Mediterranean mansion to none other than her actress friend, Jennifer Aniston, for nearly four. $14.8 million. Sadly, there are no interior photos of the home Jen purchased from Oprah, but we do know the villa's documents show some details. Built in 1998, the home, which is reportedly a Tuscan-style farmhouse, underwent a major renovation in 2008 after the last owners purchased it. Today, the mansion is built in a bit of a U-shape and offers over 4,000 square feet of space, along with four bedrooms, three full baths, and one half bath. There is also a small detached guest house or structure, which could be an office or standalone gym on the very private one acre property, which is also shrouded by plenty of woods and foliage. Jen's new estate further boasts grassy lawns, manicured gardens, entertaining terraces, mature oak trees, and a driveway and motor court with room for 15 cars or more. This long driveway is gated for more privacy while the home itself can't be seen from the street. Finally, the home also has the bonus of panorama ceramic ocean and mountain views, according to an old listing material for the property. Oprah still owns many other homes, including the massive estate next door to this one, which is a $30 million compound purchased in 2012. Not to mention her main residence, the 66 acre promised land is also in Montecito. So let's take a look at that one next. Way back in 2001, Oprah was invited to a party at a dreamy estate in the picture perfect neighborhood of Montecito near Santa Barbara and the rest was history. She fell in love with the peaceful 42 acre property so much that she persuaded the owners, Robert and Marlene Velos, to sell the place even though it wasn't on the market. Oprah wrote up a check for about $52 million and began making this place, now called the Promised Land, her very own. She named the property this to symbolize her journey from rags to riches, as it's taken from a biblical reference for an African American woman living in paradise whose ancestors were slaves. Oprah's home is decidedly paradise estimated to be worth about a hundred million dollars these days after several additions. The main mansion was built in 1912 originally, but underwent extensive renovations to make it its current size of 23,000 square feet and to suit Oprah's specific tastes. 
There are more than six beds and 14 baths throughout, as well as 10 cozy fireplaces. While Oprah bought the main property back in 2001, later in 2016, she purchased a piece of land known as Seamare Farm, spanning over 23 acres directly beside it for over $28 million. This additional property boasts a 5,000 square foot ranch style home, a pool, horse stables, caretaker cabin, equestrian ring, and even orchards. Furthermore, Oprah bought another 44 acre preserve on the other side of her property to get the ultimate privacy. These days, the promised land spans over 70 acres near the beaches and the mountains. Oprah's main home is designed in a classic Neo Georgian style, and the main entryway has a winding staircase and high ceilings, personalized with photos of loved ones so the star can see them upon first walking into her house. In fact, as her forever home, Promised Land is where Oprah and her long term term partner, Stedman Graham, love to spend time, and they have decorated the place full of mementos, books, and artwork. The home has been thoughtfully put together over the years, and Oprah runs her business empire from the property too. When she's unwinding, sometimes she even posts pics hanging with her dogs here on Instagram. The kitchen is the heart of Oprah's mansion, and it's a spot where she and her loved ones can get together and kick back. The TV icon had the fireplace and pizza oven removed to create more space here, but left the rest as it was. Altogether, her mansion boasts several living rooms, a library, kitchen, two movie theaters, an office, and a wine cellar. Also on Oprah's property, she has a fully redecorated and elegant guest house as well as a tea house. Her tea house is set right in the middle of the garden, and it was originally built as a place to cut flowers, but she changed her mind and made it a space for herself. She also also said she comes to the tea house to read, meditate, and enjoy a cup of tea. The grounds of Oprah's mansion are truly a sanctuary with perfectly manicured lawns, gardens with roses and lilies, and amazing views of the ocean and mountaintops. On one of the combined properties, Oprah also has a large pool surrounded by palm trees, a gorgeous patio, and nearby a koi pond, all creating the perfect space to entertain or relax. In 2019, Oprah also reportedly bought another home in Montecito off of actor Jeff Bridges. This property spans four acres and is next to her main estate, costing her $6.9 million. Bridges apparently spent a fortune remodeling the Spanish revival style, so it was a surprise he didn't hike up the price to sell it to Oprah, considering he bought it for basically the same price in 2014. Either way, this home was tastefully restored, offering common rooms like a living area with white walls, vaulted wood ceilings, large windows, and a cozy fireplace. The rustic yet minimalistic style continues in the kitchen where there's a wooden ceiling with skylights, custom wood cabinets to match, and a marble topped island. Over in the master suite, there are exposed beams, bay windows, and French doors out to the yard, along with highlights like a massive walk-in closet, an ensuite with soaking tub, and more. Out on the grounds of this property, you'll find a swimming pool and spa area, a pool house, a carriage house that's been transformed into an art studio, as well as a red brick terrace to lounge or entertain. Prior to securing this place, in 2018, Oprah decided to purchase another peaceful and picturesque property, this one not in Montecito. Tucked between Seattle and Vancouver, there are the San Juan Islands, made up of four main islands accessible by Washington State ferries. One of these is Orcas Island, where Oprah snagged a 43-acre compound called the Madron Eagle Estate. Oprah's getaway here is completely private with two waterfront pieces of land and 3,000 feet of shoreline. It cost her $8.2 million for this expansive property, and inside the residence measures in at over 7,300 square feet with four beds, three full baths, and two half baths. The main residence is three floors and made with stone accents and natural woods used throughout, which create the all-American luxury cabin feel. As you enter the home, you're greeted by a massive hanging art piece that frames the entryway and sets the stage for what's to come. The main level is home to the kitchen with pizza oven and skylights, living room, dining area, and bedrooms. Oprah's master suite features a stone wall with wood accents and a marble spa-like ensuite. There's also a library corner in the home with floor-to-ceiling bookshelves, which I'm sure is a feature book-loving Oprah takes advantage of. Also on the lower level, there's a home office complex, wine cellar, and a tasting room. A custom-built staircase leads to the upper level where there's a huge bonus room or family room, as well as a 
fully stocked games room. Outside is as lush as you might expect with native trees and plants manicured perfectly. Stone paths weave through the gardens, which completes the peaceful, earthy landscape. And that's not all. Of course, Oprah also needs room for her traveling entourage, which the gallery house is perfect for. The contemporary guest house in the property is just under 3,000 square feet and has four beds and three baths, all set on a high cliff perched above a private beach. Other features on her Orcas Island property include a tea house underneath the trees and overlooking the water, a huge barn with a woodworking studio up top, and a gym and yoga studio on the lower level. Elsewhere, there's a sauna, garden, pond and stream, private hiking trails, and a private beach. While these are not all of the stunning properties that Oprah Winfrey owns, it definitely gives you a taste of this billionaire's real estate portfolio. For today though, that'll bring this house tour to an end. But before we go, answer me this. If you already had a mega main house in your home state, where would you get your first vacation property if you could choose to get one anywhere? In the mountains, or on the beach, or somewhere else? Let me know your dream getaway location in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a video. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat more, and I'll see you all in another one. Bye.